Right, hi everybody, and welcome to the WGSN Trend presentation. So today I'm going to be talking you through our trends for the spring-summer 2013 season. We're going to cover a little bit of formal wear, some party wear, some occasion wear, some casual wear. Um, so hopefully we've got a little bit of something for everybody here that we're hoping should really give you some confidence and some direction in your buying decisions here at Pure. So for those of you who are not familiar with the way that we work at WJSN, each season we basically have three macro trends which we create. Now those are our overriding trends for the whole season and they provide the framework for our trends um, and the different directions that you can take them. So today I'm going to be talking you through the three trends and for each one I'm going to be showing you two different directions and two different ways that that can be interpreted. So the first trend I'm going to talk you through is called Wonder Lab. So this, for this trend, we're inspired by recent galactic and scientific advances and the expectation that the world is just beginning to change in ways that we're only really starting to imagine. So we're looking at electronics, biochemistry, and digital imaging. And this is forming the basis for the visuals for this trend, which is both futuristic but also quite naturalistic as well. Okay, so we're going to begin with the futuristic, and this is a party wear collection. So this is going to be very strong for your um, sort of uh, occasion wear, for your April and May drops. Here we're looking at a very grayed off palette you should see here. So there's not much color here, but what's important here is actually surface texture and especially metallics. So after a few seasons on the back burner, we're really starting to see metallics pick up again, and we feel very strongly about the importance for metallics, obviously for, for Christmas, but then right through into spring, summer as well. So um, in each category, I'm going to run through some key items. We're going to show you how some of the key items that your customer will already be very, very familiar with can work into these trends. I think because the way that the market is moving at the moment, you know, financially there's still quite a lot, it's still quite difficult out there. So trends are not always about introducing something new all the time. We also have to think about what are the pieces that your customer's familiar with, that they already understand, that they already have in their wardrobe. How can they work those pieces into these trends as well? Or go out and repeat buy some of the classic items, like for example the pencil skirt, which you can see on this slide, it's all about a silhouette that they're very familiar with and that they understand. So here you can see uh, like a simple shift dress or the ruffle front jacket or the, or the pencil skirt here and they're just updated in these metallics and these kinds of galactic foils. And then the, the ruffle uh, peplum on the pencil skirt there has just got this kind of crumpled futuristic quality to it. And then uh, the ruffles as well. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will have had a lot of success with ruffles in the past. And here we're just kind of pushing them onto a new level. So we've got these kind of very sculptural ruffles or layered ruffles. And that's just taking them on. And it's, it's moving them away from something very girly. So if your customer isn't super girly, I think that you shouldn't discount these because these actually have a sort of very dynamic quality to them. And then we've got some more surface texture here coming through with this kind of laser cutting, giving you a sort of lace-like quality, um, both in the metallics, but also in these kind of white-on-white -white layers. Now, as I go through the presentation today, I'm going to be talking to you a bit about uh, the importance of sportswear. Obviously, 2012 has been a, a very big year for sports um, and for the fashion industry as, as well as the Olympics and everything else. And we're seeing sportswear trending in a fashion way, in a way that it probably hasn't for quite a few years. And it's really, really picking up that importance. And I don't think that you need to necessarily categorize that along with sort of casual wear. Those sports influences can come through in lots of different ways. And here we can see that kind of mesh underlay under this laser cut leather. And it's just those little touches that bring that sporty element even into something like this very sort of glitzy party wear trend. And if you look as well through styling, the image on the left-hand side where you've got that pencil skirt, but just styled with a simple white t-shirt, does give it that little sporty edge. 
And then just to drive the message home about the metallics, I've got this slide here to show you that this is really what this is all about. So we've got some color tint metallics here, and again, those kind of crumpled, foiled surfaces. And then as we go through the presentation today, I'm also going to just show you some confirmations about how this look is already being picked up by the designers for their pre-season collections. So these images that you can see here are all from the pre-season collections. And you can start to see those, uh, those foiled, crumpled surfaces. You can see the kind of sculpted peplum on the image there. And just really how the importance of metallics has been picked up already and confirmed in those collections. OK, if I can get my first couple of models out for Wonderlab, please. OK, so here you can see this is a uh, gold sequin top, which is by the Pretty Dress Company, and some foil shorts by Coffee. So I think this is a great example of how you can work this look with the, um, the foiled surfaces, the color tint that I was talking about before, and also the, um, the peplum as well. OK, and so Yeon here is wearing a uh, cream satin dress with the little lace trim there. And that's by 94 West Street. And again, I think this is a great example of how to work this trend because it's, it has a kind of prettiness to it, but also it's got a kind of more sculptural quality to it with that curved hem. Thank you. Right, so now we're going to move on to the next way to, that you can interpret the Wonder Lab trend. So this is done through tailoring. Um, now here we can see that the color accents are li uh, limited to the kind of blue here, and that's played off against the sort of very neutral background, these warm neutral grays. So these should be a few key items that, again, you'll recognize that are very familiar to your customer. So the peplum, which you know we've seen a lot of peplums for spring, summer 12. We're expecting to see those peplums really carry through all the way through autumn, winter. And we still think at WGSN, you've still got life left in those. So they can still continue all the way through spring, summer as well. So we've got that little peplum top. But again, it's that sporty detail, that slightly cutaway neck, um, neckline with the kind of racer vest influence there. And then in the middle, we've got the printed trouser, which is still selling very, very well. So I think that that's something that the customer has really responded well to. If you think about a couple of years ago, if you'd have thought about trying to sell printed trousers, you'd have, you know, you'd have been lucky, really. But actually, I think the jumpsuit has really sort of helped customers understand how that head-to-toe patterning can work. And they're very receptive to pattern trousers. And we're going to see for autumn, winter, a lot of um, patterning happening through brocades and things like that. So I think the pattern trousers continuing. And we're also going to see some pattern coordinates as well. And then on the left-hand side, we've got the peplum blazer. So I think this is kind of capitalizing on the, uh, on the popularity of something like the boyfriend jacket, but just introducing that peplum into that shape as well. And then these are some newer key items. So these are things that we're not really seeing uh, trending at retail just yet, but we feel for next spring, summer is something that you should keep an eye on. And so these are much sort of fuller uh, skirt shapes here and wraparound shapes as well. And again, that's balanced with the kind of sporty tops. Um, this, these fuller skirt shapes are something that the trends team at WJSN are really sort of pushing right through into autumn, winter 13, 14 and beyond. So they're definitely one to keep an eye on. And then I've mentioned it a few times, but here is a uh, slide dedicated to the peplum. So we've got sort of four different interpretations here from something that's very sculptural, that's inspired by someone like Mary Catransau, to something that's much more tailored uh, as a sort of peplum jacket, um, to you know, just these kind of very simple peplum tops and the uh, crochet version on the end there that's got this almost kind of aquatic feel to it. 
And then for fabric, we're looking at these Duchess satins to really carry through that shine. So it doesn't need to be metallics, but the importance of shine for fabrics. And then Wonderlab is really, it's a great trend for print and pattern direction. And we're looking at um, lots of influences here, like I mentioned earlier, the kind of microbiotic patterning, but also these kind of geological color facades um, moving in as an alternative to something like tie-dye or ombre. So they've almost got this kind of aged rock-like quality to them with that um, image on the left-hand side there. And then the microbiotic patterns can move on the... Um, the kind of polka dots and spots into just a much more of a sort of artistic and, and uh, sophisticated direction, really. And then next up, we've got the uh, pre-season confirmation slide here. So you can see that the peplums are carried right the way through into the pre-season collections. And you can also see that that palette of those kind of very warm greys and those microbiotic prints coming through as well. OK, so can I have my next two models for Wonderlab, please? Okay, so this one is a uh, gold dress which is by Atala, and the beige jacket is by Cutie. And so this gold dress has like a, got a kind of um, hammered, like almost sort of cloquet quality to it, with that kind of dropped and full dirndl shape which we saw in the new key items. And it is about that palette of sort of, it's very easy to wear palette of uh, very warm neutrals. And then here's the printed trouser that I was talking about um, and these printed coordinates. I mean, the head-to-toe look is, you know, maybe it's a bit braver, but really it, it's no different to wearing a jumpsuit once you've kind of got that whole look on. And then what I love about this is that it's got that sort of sporty element to it. So we've put it with quite a sporty pair of heels and also that exposed sporty zip at the back. And then, of course, it is uh, featuring the obligatory peplum as well. OK, thank you very much. OK, so now this is a little look at uh, the footwear and how that's coming through. So we've got these loose sight heels, which have already started to drop into retail and definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, and then also, I really love this uh, heeled loafer on the right-hand side that's got this kind of almost geological kind of layered formation in there. And it's just a great way to update sort of very simple, um, simple shoe shape. And then for accessories, we're looking at the loose sight and plastics continuing into accessories. And they almost have this kind of amber-like quality to them with uh, things suspended within them. And then the rocks as well that have this sort of geological look. So we're looking at natural rough-hewn finishes which echo a kind of moonscape. OK, so that is the end of the first macro trend. And our takeaways from Wonderlab are intricate microbiotic patterning and vibrant color stem from laboratory or marine inspiration points. Peplums continue for delicately printed formal wear. And we see a heavy return to a heavy use of metallics for both party wear and accessories. So moving on now to our next macro trend, which is called the story of now. Now here we're looking back at our digital past and we're re-examining technology which was once cast aside. This trend has a functional utilitarian feel with a harmony between form and function. So we're going to start off with a casual wear look for the story of now. Now the color palette here is very washed back mid-tones and again you can see the grade neutrals coming through. And then it's just got a little flash of um, metallic which is just there to really represent the kind of technological aspect of this trend. Now, I'm sure you've all had lots of success in the past with the trench coat and it's something that's there every spring year in, year out, and people keep wearing it, and people keep buying it. And at WGSN, it's very important for us to recognize the, uh, the kind of 
potential, the commercial potential in these items and keep driving them forwards. If they're still selling, you know, keep going with it. If people are still making money from these things, then great. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a new silhouette for the trench coats. It's much more, it's much softened. So if you look at those kind of dropped shoulders, the rolled back sleeves and the kind of belted in waist, it's got this kind of quite slouchy, almost sort of 80s androgynous sort of look to it. Um, and I was in Scandinavia um, a few weeks ago, and I had started to see a few of these coming through. I think these look really great as a kind of silhouette update for the trench coat. And then we've just thrown a few basics in here. So these kind of cropped and raw edge vest tops, which can be used as layering items over maxi dresses or over other T-shirts. And then the T-shirt in the middle that's got this kind of stepped construction, which kind of does that layering for you all in the one garment. And then there's the sportswear influence again on the end. So this is the sweatshirt, which again has been selling very, very well for the whole of this season. We're looking at it move right the way through to autumn, winter. And this is uh, a kind of, I guess, a con sort of contemporary classic as the sweatshirt and, and different incarnations of it. And here we're just looking at it in a kind of short-sleeved version. And then if you're, you have any kind of festival promotions that you do for summer, I think this is a, these are some great um, items for festival wear. So we've got this poncho cape with this sports utility detailing and also just a little utility skirt there as well. And then on the end, we've got the shirt dress, which we've got here in a camo. Now, I think for autumn, winter, we know that we've got all these military looks that are about to hit. And they're about to hit in a very sort of structured and tailored way. But actually, you know, into spring, summer, that can soften up and become a little bit, um, a little bit more casual. So we're looking more at camo print and army fatigues. And then, again, our trends team is expecting that to carry right the way through into uh, autumn, winter, 13, 14, and beyond. And we're already seeing that camo working for menswear. So here is our um, pre-season slides. So these are the, um, the way that the designers have interpreted these looks. So we've got that kind of poncho cape shape in there. We've got the camo in there. We've got the shirt dress in there. And then uh, the third image along is Salvatore Ferragamo, where you can see that softened trench coat that I was just talking about as well. OK, if I can get my first story of now models out, please. OK, so this uh, jacket and skirt are by Urban Code, and the vest top is um, truly by part two. So what we're looking at here is that kind of uh, softened utility uh, shape for, I guess this is a kind of cropped version of a trench um, with the short sleeve in the car keys and the warm neutrals again. And then the print on the skirt, it's not camo, but I mean, it's ways of sort of echoing that kind of uh, camouflage type of a print. And then this is just a really simple, very classic way to work this. This is a uh, cream silk dress is by, truly by part two that Yeon is wearing. And I think this is just like a very sophisticated way to work a kind of utility look. So you've got like a bit of a bat wing sleeve on it. And it's just very easy throw on piece, super commercial, super easy to understand. And it's just got a sort of slight utility feel to it. Okay, thank you both. Okay, so now we're going to move on to something different for the story of now. So this is our sort of contemporary, more tailored collection. So here we're looking at uh, modernist influences for formal wear with primary brights playing against black in a move on from the kind of neon and neutral combinations which we've seen a lot of this, um, this previous season. So this trend is essentially about an update on color blocking. Now, for the kind of carryover items, we're looking at the slim leg trouser in the middle there, which um, is something that you should all be quite familiar with. Here, we've got it with a kind of patched construction at the top, which is a way of introducing several colors into the, into the one um, item. And again, that uh, dress, the, sorry, the shirt on the right-hand side with the contrast uh, collar and button placket. I mean, we're seeing those in the stores already, but I think what's important here is a, is a way of just 
incorporating two colors in that kind of um, color blocked way, whether or not you wear it with the side tie knickers is up to you. Uh, and then on the right hand, sorry, on the left hand side, we've got the biker jacket. So that's another piece. It's like the trench coat. It just keeps going and going and going. And you know, if you were onto a good thing, like I said, let's keep running with it. So here we've got it in a sleeveless shape. Um, and as we go through this, I'm going to sort of talk to you about the influence of the biker jacket there. So these are some very new key items. We've got this um, peplum shell top. But if you look at the closure on that top, that's kind of echoing that diagonal zip on the biker jacket. And that's what this look is really about. It's very got a modernist look, but it's really all about these kind of angled constructions. And then in the middle there, we've got this fitted dress. And what you should look at here is the, the kind of wider shoulder line on the dress, which comes into a very tapered, narrow waist. And it's that kind of upside down triangle silhouette that we're really looking at here for um, a silhouette inspiration for Spring Summer 13. And then on the right-hand side, we've got the pencil skirt, which has got this kind of uh, fluted, very sculptural peplum on it again. So we talked about the peplums in Wonder Lab, and this is just showing how they're working right the way through the season. Um, and you can even introduce them to something very angular like here, like this trend, to really play against those sharp angles. And then this, uh, this slide is really to design to show you about how all that asymmetric angles are, are really working in a very actionable way. So we've got the biker jacket there and two, two different slides. And then also the wrap skirt, which I sort of briefly mentioned earlier, and how that's creating that same line. And also with the bag that she's carrying on the right-hand image. And then this slide is all about the, uh, the kind of contrast taping and framing. Um, I think what I really like about this is the way that this black really just grounds these, uh, these kind of neutrals and brights here. And look at the, the way that this, these uh, tapes have been placed. So they're sort of slightly off center or slightly asymmetric. And then we've got the zips. So I'm, this is another sports influence that's coming through here. I mean, we've seen lots of zip detailing over the last few seasons. Um, and for Spring Summer 13, our trends team are really talking about the kind of double zip as the zip of the season, which you can see in the, Im in the center image. Or on the right-hand side, we've got these kind of almost assembled bricolage kind of patchwork feel with the, um, the self-colored zips. But I really love the image on the left-hand side and the way that the zips are used to actually kind of delineate those color blocks. So I think that works really effectively. And then for the pre-season uh, collection, we've got the uh, designers using this black taping and black framing to just really break that up. And you can see the sculptural peplum in there. And you can also see the asymmetry of the top on the right-hand side. OK, can I get my next uh, Story of Now models out, please? OK, so this mosaic print skirt is by Lily and Me. And then we've got a, a mesh print t-shirt here, which is by Klushka. And I think that this outfit is really a great example of how you can sort of mix the sporty elements of the mesh with the t-shirt with something that's much more structured, um, like the skirt. And here's the old faithful biker jacket. And again, that's, we've just paired that with something quite sporty and color blocking here. So the biker jacket is by uh, Trudy by part two. And the sporty zip dress is by Sebastian Urich. And then we've got the zip in there as well. I'm trying to tick off all the trends for you. Great, thank you both. OK, so for accessories, I think this trend can be really interpreted in a very literal way with these modernist influences for jewelry. Um, but then also look at something very simple like the clutch bag to just work as a color vehicle to just carry some of those kind of poster brights of this trend. So the takeaways from the story of now macro trends are that form follows function for utilitarian casuals and modernist formal wear. Color blocking is evolved for the early season color deliveries. 
and contemporary classic shapes are updated for the professional market. Okay, now on to our final macro trend, which is called idiomatic. So this is an evolution of a macro trend we did last season called hyperculture, and it explores the regional idiosyncrasies with a global appeal. So here we're looking directly at cultures, the customs, symbols, and hidden eccentricities, and we're magnifying them in a very progressive way. And this is really a great trend for print and pattern direction. So we're going to start off with this contemporary collection, and this is building on the success of all of the native, uh, native American influences. So we've seen these really trending very, very strongly for uh, the youth market with all these kind of Navo-inspired in and Aztec print designs that I'm sure you've seen loads of out in the shops. So rather than killing this trend, what we're looking at here is an evolution of it, where it's moving through into new product categories. So here we're just taking it into a more formal direction in a much more tailored and sophisticated way. So it's just opening that trend up to a new market. So the color palette here is these kind of uh, desert tones, and then the accent of very bright blue is just keeping it very contemporary. So the carryover items, we've got the um, printed shirt, which is something we've seen around a lot at the moment. And I think this is a great example of how you can take that kind of Aztec patterning and just do it in something that's, rather than having it on a fringed jersey dress or fringed jersey vest or something like that, which is what we would see for the kind of younger and festival end of the market, to just do it on a, on a woven base rather than on a jersey and just in a very structured way just gives it that much more sophisticated edge. And then the pleated pencil skirt in the middle, again, is just updated. It's very easy to wear, easy to understand item, and it's just updated with that, a little bit of ombre, that shot of blue, and a little bit of um, geometric patterning. And then on the right-hand side, we've got something which closely resembles a kind of peplum biker. Uh, so again, it's all about how those shapes are continuing through, but are just given a new lease of life with a bit, uh, bit of geometric patterning here. And then here is a uh, one-sleeved shape. So we've got one of these on our catwalk show to, um, that you'll be able to see later. So this is like more daring if you want to take it to a kind of off-the-shoulder look. Or, you know, it can actually be worked for day wear as well. I think the image on the far right there is a great example of that with just an extended sleeve on one side. And then we've seen leather selling very, very well over, you know, really for a couple of years now and um, really pushing some of those higher price points. And so here we're looking at suede basically joining leather in that kind of capacity um, and these kind of softened suede finishes looking great in these desert neutral tones. And then, as I said, for print and pattern, this is really strong. And I think we've got some great pattern interpretations here. So it doesn't necessarily need to be an all over, but I think that these kind of very uh, sort of structured, placed prints and the big chevron designs as well, I think chevrons are definitely something to keep an eye on for stripe updates. And then for accessories, we've got these very raw, kind of unpolished leathers. So this is not necessarily a trend where you're looking at lots of accessories. I think if you overload it with lots of beads and bangles, you're probably going to take away from the simplicity and the sophistication of this look. So what's important is to just keep it quite pared back and quite sophisticated with these raw leathers, very simple shapes. And that's the way to accessorize this trend. And then we've already seen some really great examples of how brands are doing this at Pure when we were putting the show together. Um, and this slide is showing how the designers are doing it for the pre-season collections. So you can see really here how that shot of bright blue is just working against those neutrals to just reinterpret these tribal looks in a very new way. And again, you're looking at the very sharp lines of the skirts, but mixed with these uh, tribal print designs. OK, if I can get my next models out, please. OK, so this is a printed top, which is by part two. And the printed trousers are by Urban Code. So they've got, like I said, it, it does have this kind of tribal influence to it. It has got a kind of ikat style to the, um, to the print, but it's just 
in these kind of very pared back greys and then the top has just got that kind of uh, shot of blue in it as well to just confirm the colour palette that I'm talking about here. And I think, you know, just slightly mismatching these prints in the way that you style it up is, uh, is something that the consumer's really responding to well at the moment as well. And then here's the suede that I was talking about. And I mean, we put a necklace with this one because the, um, because the dress doesn't have any print on it. So it's just very, very sophisticated. And the necklace is very kind of sculptural as well. So this suede dress is by Urban Code. And again, you can see the exposed zip on the back there. So again, it just, you know, just bringing those little sporty elements in wherever possible, I think that is uh, sort of very key for spring, summer 13. Okay, thank you both. Right, so this is our final look for idiomatic. So here we're looking at occasion wear, and this is something completely different to everything we've looked at so far. So this is a very sort of feminine and folksy direction. Now we know that folk looks are going to be really, really important for autumn, winter 12, 13. And this is really just about taking those looks right the way through then to spring, summer 13. So we've got a color palette here, which is sort of very full-bodied reds and also those kind of inky blues again. You'll notice how many blues have been introduced in the, um, throughout the color palette as we've looked at all of these trends. And here, rather than the darks, which you'll see this trend working with for autumn winter, we're pairing it back with sort of very delicate pales, so these kind of flesh tone pinks and the lace whites as well. I mean, this, is, this slide is showing you sort of very literal interpretation of uh, what you'd expect from an Eastern European folksy look. So we've got these folk florals working on very dark grounds. I think what's important here is to look at the fact that these uh, florals are all embroidered. I think there's an opportunity here to really upsell some pieces by putting in some sort of more handwork and craft work into this trend and to make your customer understand that that's giving added value to something rather than a print. Now, lace has been selling very, very well, and we see lace selling spring, summer, autumn, winter. It really is a year-round fabric. Um, and so here we're looking to really capitalize on the popularity of lace. We've got the little lace dress, which is something that, you know, you can find in the shops at the moment, but that's something that can work very well into this trend here. So we've got one here with a little uh, lace yoke and sleeves. And then on the right-hand side, we've got the pencil skirt. So you can either look at something like a, a lace overlay, or you can look at um, in the way that we, our women's wear team have done here with a kind of dropped, it's almost like a dropped petticoat coming out from underneath a shorter pencil skirt uh, here, which I think is just a nice way of sort of updating that shape. And then in the middle, we've got the pattern trouser again. And so this is like uh, the brocade trousers that we're seeing for autumn, winter, and showing how those can work into this trend also. And then this slide really shows how those folk influences can work for very sophisticated and smart shirting with these kind of embroidered yokes and bibs. And then, as I mentioned earlier about the lace, I think what's important here is to look at the difference between a kind of synthetic stretch lace and something that's returning to much more sort of traditional lace uh, handicraft. So we're looking at uh, traditional needlework here, and keeping it in that palette of whites is really reinforcing the authenticity of the lace in this case, and just in very, very simple shapes. I think these are going to be great for beach cover-ups. And then this is a fantastic look for accessories selling. There is great opportunity for the accessories market here with lots of printed scarves. There's all sorts of styling things that you can do with the printed scarves here. And also hair accessories. Um, and then the bottom right-hand image there, we've got this kind of floral corsage headband. Now, this is something that we're seeing at WGSN coming up in all of our festival shots. Uh, I know that Lana Del Rey was wearing quite a few in a lot of her press shots. And it's it's almost got this kind of Frida Kahlo feel to it. I think that's a key accessory to really watch for next uh, spring, summer for occasion wear right into festival wear as well. 
And then here you can see how the designers are picking up on this for the pre-season collections. So we've got the traditional lace dress that I talked about. And then we've also got some of that folksy patterning, but just worked in various different ways from the kind of dropped, uh, dropped dirndl shapes to something that's much more fit and flair. OK, if I can get my last models out, please. OK, so here is a really simple fit and flare shape. Um, and like I said, it's about working those kind of folksy influences, but in the whites rather than the darks as we take this look through into spring summer. So this dress is by Mrs. Pomeranz. And it's just really simple. I mean, you can take this uh, trend to the extreme with lots of overblown florals, or you can just keep it very pared back and easy and quite dainty for summer. And then Daptoni is wearing this lace dress. Um, with, and I think what's important here is the uh, accessories. So to put it with a pair of floral tights or uh, the... Uh, the floral scarf as well, and the way that we've just kind of twisted that round. So there's lots of opportunities to really play around with this look with the accessories. You know, you can introduce some great big earrings and bags and embroidered bags and all sorts of things into this trend. So really great one for accessory selling. And she's actually got a fantastic ring on here. I don't know if you can see. So we had some great earrings from that as well. Okay, thank you, Rose. Okay, so our final takeaways for the idiomatic trend are that print and pattern are coming to the fore, embellishments add value to placements and all overs, and Navajo inspirations are moved into formal wear, and then we've got folk florals which are worked with decorative finishes such as lace for summer occasion wear. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you all so much for coming and listening to the trends. I hope that you've all got something to take away with you and that you can uh, come and watch the catwalk show as well. So thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.